wanna be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakers. I make it. Welcome back to another episode of Lone Star College Football. Today we've got uh, some pretty big news as far as this weekend for recruiting. Um, we've got a bunch of guys coming onto campus this weekend. Really a kind of a last ditch kind of effort for some of these guys. Uh, and then going into the early signing period to get some of them signed. A couple of them at least, well, for sure, Arch Manning will be an early enrollee in January. Uh, and then we still have a lot of recruiting left to do before the official signing day uh, earlier on next year. Uh, just jumping right into it, Arch Manning, he's going to be in town. Well, he's potentially going to be in town. It's not confirmed yet. It is almost uh, kind of expected that he might be. Uh, big news on him is that the latest – round of update as far as recruiting goes he stays at number one in the nation uh so he's the number one quarterback number one prospect in the country and you know there's there's other good quarterbacks in this class for sure like jackson arnold uh i think he's at a denton guy or here in texas who just lost to DeSoto in the playoffs to uh, john Tay cook uh jackson arnold he's a really good quarterback i've watched a couple of his uh games on tv and sucks that he's going to be going to oklahoma because uh, he's a really talented guy. <clears throat> uh, who else is going to be in Austin this weekend? Well, we've got uh, Sadir Mitchell. He'll be in, he'll be on campus this uh, weekend. And Georgia's still pushing for him pretty heavily. Um, we feel good about it, but you never know when you've got a team like Georgia pushing. They're a playoff team. They're my favorite to win the play, uh, win the national championship this year. Uh, so we've got to have a last uh, – we hopefully get the last say in his recruitment. Peyton Kirkland will be on campus. Uh, Jelani McDonald will be on campus. Roderick Pierce, Samaj Burrell, and Ryan Niblet. And those last two, uh, Samaj Burrell and Ryan Niblet, there's been a little uh, shaky ground with them over the last two weeks or so. Houston is pushing really for both of those. Um, Ryan Niblet today kind of kind of released a picture on Instagram of him in some Texas gear trying to calm that storm. So we, we feel good about him staying. Samaj so Burrell did say that he also wants to visit Baylor, uh, but I guess he plans on visiting Houston or maybe he just got back from a visit with them. But uh, he said that he will be in Austin this weekend. He claims he's solid with Texas. He's not looking um, to go anywhere else. But on the same note, uh, Houston – Sounds like they're – I think they released a thing the other day saying that they're expecting two flips to come soon. So hopefully they're not thinking that it's going to be Niblet or Samaj Burrell. Um, we've got Anthony Hill, linebacker. I don't think he's on the list to be in town this weekend. Um, he's the guy who just decommitted from A&M not too terribly long ago. And at first, when he first decommitted, it was like, all right, this is a lot. He's coming to Texas. We were his number two team whenever he decided to commit to AM. So it only makes sense that he's going to flip from AM to Texas. Well, now more recently, it seems like AM is still very much in this race. Um, they've had a lot of people exit that program. And I wonder if I, there's a part of me that's like, well, maybe that means he doesn't want to go there because of that. But it's also like, well, you know, if, I think their best linebacker. Cooper, Adrian Cooper or something like that, uh, is now in the portal or expected to be in the portal. And so it's like, all right, you go there, you can immediately start. But the same deal is on the table for Texas. With DeMarvin and Overshaw now, you come here, you're starting. Day one. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I'm not sure. I, if I had to guess, Anthony Hill is probably going to be a uh, an early signing guy. He seems like he, he might be an early enrollee. Um Really, that's that's really the the main news is is that there's a big weekend this weekend in Austin that these guys are going to be a part of um, right before uh, the signing day. We've got a little bit uh, of transfer portal news as well. Before we jump into that, y'all do us one favor, actually two favors: like the video and subscribe to the channel. We're going pretty quick, and uh, we would like to keep growing this community. Um, as you can see down here on the scrolling tab, we also have uh, Casey Crutcher over at Rollo Insurance. Y'all check him out. He was able to save me and my wife uh, $40 a month when we switched from a different insurance provider to him. 
Uh, he does home, auto, life, and business commercial insurance. So if you're in Texas and you're looking for a change, trying to save some cash, give him a call and see what he can do for you. With that being said, Texas did get a commitment from a four-star punter. Now, I say four-star. It doesn't really matter. Not a four-star. I lied. A four-year starter. I can't read, apparently. A four-year starting punter, kicker, and uh, he's a holder on field goal unit. Uh, he's from Stanford, Ryan Sanborn, the only power five punter uh, last season who had 20 punts down inside the 20 yard line without a touchback. That's pretty impressive to punt 20 of them inside the 20 with no touchbacks. We like that. Hope, well, we like that if a lot of them are also inside the 10. I'm sure a lot of them aren't, or else they would have said inside the 10. Uh, but either way, we have some issues with punting last year, a little bit of inconsistency at kicker. We feel pretty good about Burt Auburn. He hit 79% of his kicks last year. So hopefully with some development and uh, experience, he'll be a little bit more consistent this year. But I think arguably one of the biggest things about this that's important is that he's going to be the holder. Hudson card was our holder for field goals with him transferring out. We need somebody who can step in and do that. So, uh, hopefully this guy comes on campus, can work with Burt uh, Auburn a little bit or a lot of it before the season starts and get some practice in. A uh, little bit of more transfer portal news. Recently we've seen JoJo Earl, receiver out of Alabama, and Chris Marshall, receiver out of a and hit the portal. Both are pretty, pretty good targets. And honestly, I kind of – JoJo Earl, not so much. I thought Texas would go after Chris Marshall – but currently, as it sits, though, you're both being looked at heavily by TCU, which is not good for us. Uh, those are – Chris Marshall especially is not somebody that I want to have to play against. He's fast. We recruited him heavily. He is uh, a talented guy. And it's also just crazy that TCU is in the mix for some of these guys. Um, with, with that, we've got uh, – you know, because Quentin Johnston, he's got to be going to the NFL, right? Like, there's no way he comes back unless he's a sophomore and I'm not looking there. I'm pretty sure he's an upperclassman. So he's got to be going to the league. Um, Tony Grimes, he's the number three defensive back currently in the transfer portal. He's got 97 career tackles. Um, he's currently being recruit, uh, recruited in the transfer portal the most by AM, USC, and Virginia Tech. I'd really like to see Texas jump on board. We've got uh, Deshaun Jameson leaving. Ron Watts is going to be our number one. And we've got talent. Don't get me wrong. You know, we've got Malik Muhammad coming. He'll be a true freshman, though. And he's talented. I think a guy like Tony Grimes could probably step in and improve our defensive back room. Um, Marshawn Lloyd, running back out of South Carolina. Um, South Carolina has a new offensive coordinator. So Marshawn Lloyd has jumped into the portal. 579 yards, nine touchdowns, 5.2 yards per carry. He has had some issues um, as far as uh, injury goes he's not a guy that i think texas is going to go after because our running back room is stacked and we've got the number one running back in the country coming this year he is a guy that i would expect to be a, a hot commodity on the portal market and uh, would be interested to see where he lands hopefully not in the big 12 moving on to quarterbacks uh four four main big names right now in the quarterback uh conversation for the transfer portal uh grayson mccall from uh Coastal Carolina, he's in the portal, kind of unexpected. Um, I don't blame him. You're, you know, he's, he's been at Coastal for a couple of years, and he's played well. I think he can move up to the Power Five and and progress and develop and do do more and probably get a higher draft grade. Not entirely sure where I can see him landing. Um, and there's other quarterbacks like Spencer Sanders now, and, and a lot of people hate on Spencer Sanders I think Spencer Sanders is better. He was better last year than people want to give him credit for because really all people are going to remember is how terrible that first half of the Oklahoma game was. Um, and really their second half of the season kind of just fell apart. They beat Texas and fell apart. Go figure. Uh, uh, DJ Uyunglele, I don't think he's committed anywhere yet. Um, he's going to be a big name. Hudson Card, he's the number four quarterback currently in the – um, in the transfer portal, he's right now being projected to Notre Dame. So we'll see how that goes. Cade McNamara transferred out of Michigan. He is going to Iowa. Um, and I think, I think that helps Iowa, uh, quite a bit. 
their offense was terrible. Their offense couldn't get any worse. Uh, so having Cade McNamara, he's a he's a decent quarterback. We'll see. We'll see what he can do. Uh, Jaheim Bell, number one tight end, going from South Carolina to Florida State. He's a guy that I wanted Texas to jump on, even though we have Jatavion Sanders. Jaleel Billingsley, he just he's leaving. He he left the football program. So, you know, we've still got Gunner Helm and um we've got one other guy that I is blanking on his name. Um, and that's that's mostly the individual players' names that I have right now. But the interesting thing is we still have we still have four teams, other than Cade McNamara from Michigan, we still have four teams that are still playing like major competitive football this year. We've got TCU, Ohio State, Michigan, and Georgia. And we haven't really seen players leaving into the portal from those four teams. And we can expect that. There will be a rush of talent from those four teams after they lose, uh, whether it's after they lose, you know, Michigan and TCU are going to play. Whoever loses that game, you could probably expect to go ahead and see some players jump to the portal. Um, and I'm interested to see who it could be. You know, last year, Alabama Alabama loses the national championship, and then they have guys like Ajay Hall hit the portal, and Texas goes after. Bill Ainsley hits the portal, Texas goes after. Uh, so I'm kind of interested to see who on these – high tier programs, not that those guys really came to Texas and did much, but who on these high tier programs might be looking at the portal that Texas could go after. With that being said, once again, if y'all didn't make it this far, really do appreciate y'all rocking with us. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, drop in the comment section who y'all think we should go after uh, and give us some topics on things you would like to hear us talk about. We will try to do some research and get those pushed out for y'all. Once again, call Casey Crutcher. Um, he helped us out a lot. I'm sure he can help y'all out. Uh, my understanding is it don't cost anything to talk to him. So can't hurt to ask. Appreciate y'all rocking with us.